So we're going to look at uh, three-phase power calculations. And in this uh, video, we're going to be focusing in on balanced three-phase circuits and a three-phase power formula, so a new formula. Okay, so in this one we have a Y-connected load, and it's a balanced load. And it's balanced because it's got the same impedance of 20 ohms in each phase. And it's at a 0.8 power factor in each phase, so the power factor is the same in each phase. So if I were to go through and do some of the math on this and uh, calculations, if I take my phase voltage, so my V phase would be 347. Remember in Y, the rules of Y, that V line is equal to V phase times root 3. So I want to know V phase, that's V line divided by root 3. So in this case, 600 volt line voltage gives us 347 volt phase voltage. Now I can go ahead and calculate the current in each phase by taking the voltage of the phase, dividing it by our impedance in each phase. And that comes to 17.35 amps. All right, so now we're going to start, this is from uh, previous up until now. Now we're going to start looking at how to calculate uh, the total three phase apparent power. And you can see I've already drawn triangles down below. So each one of these represents a phase in the circuit. So for example, this one is for uh, phase S A to N. So there's your apparent power in A to N. And it's at a power factor of 0 0.8. And on the horizontal, we've got the true power, P A to N. On the vertical, the quadrant of power in A to N. The next three triangles are going to be identical to this because it is an up-balanced circuit. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that out. BN, it's at, once again at a 0.8. If we put 0.8 in our calculator, it works out to 36.87 degrees. So the same triangles in each one. So this is PC to N, QC to N, and SC to N. So if I were to go ahead and start doing some calculations on this to calculate apparent power, for apparent power in A phase, so SA to N, it would be voltage A to N times I A to N. So that's 347 volt times 17.35 amps. So that comes out to about 6,020.45 VA. So that number would go right there. 6,020.45 VA. If I want to figure out the true power in B to N, well, I'm just going to use my power factor. I could also use cosine of theta. So I'll take my apparent power, S A to N, multiply it by your power factor, or cosine theta, and that's going to come to about 48.16.36, I believe, watts. So that would go here, 48. 16.36 watts. Calculate the Q A to N. Well, there's a couple ways I can do this. I can take my S A to N and times it by sine of theta using my trig. So I know my hypotenuse, multiply it by sine of the angle, and I get Q A to N. Or another way is if I, I could also use Pythagorean theorem. So Q A to N would be equal to the square root of S A to N squared minus P A to N squared. Either way, putting in those numbers, it should come pretty close to 3612.27 VAR. And so that'd be my vertical component. 3612.27 0.27 VAR. Now, because this is a balanced circuit, the power dissipated in each phase 
and the phase angle are all identical. So in other words, I could write it out like this. S A to N is the same as S B to N, which is the same as S C to N. P A to N is equal to P B to N, which is equal to P C to N. Q A N is the same as Q B N, which is the same as Q C N. They're all the same value. And all the triangles are at the exact same angle. So in other words, if I wanted to figure out the P total here, I could add up all the horizontals. And if I know one of them, all I got to do is multiply it by 3. So if I take the power of the phase, multiply it by 3, I've got my total true power in the circuit. So if I were to do that, that would be, uh, what's our value of power? 48.16. 0.36 times by 3, it'll come to 144.9.08 watts. For the total quadrant of power, three-phase power, it's going to be the same thing, Q of the phase times 3, because it's balanced. That's why we can do this. If it was unbalanced, we couldn't do it this way. So the Q of each phase is 36.312.27. Or, or if I multiply that by 3, I should get somewhere around 10836.81 var. And for the S total, well, if this was an unbalanced circuit, I'd have to use this formula. Square root of my horizontal plus my vertical, each squared. So P total squared plus Q total squared. And that should come to about 18061.35 VA. But because they're all at the same power factor, same angle, and they're exactly the same magnitude, I could use this because they're identical. And they are the exact same angle. So I could say S total is equal to S phase times 3. Well, if I take my phase apparent power, 6,020 point 4, 5 VA times that by 3 should come to the exact same value. 18061.35 VA. And if I want to figure out the power factor of the circuit, well, power factor of the circuit well, that would be equal to the true power total over the S total. So if I take my total true power divided by my S total, it's still the same power factor, 0 0.8. As a matter of fact, I could add up all these apparent power values at their angles, whatever they may be, whether it's balanced or unbalanced, as long as I add them up at their angles and I'll get the total apparent power. I'm going to introduce you guys to a new formula. And this is our new formula. S total equals V line times I line times root 3. We're going to discuss a little later how this works. So if I were to punch in the values in this, to get the exact number, I'd have to use 601 volts because I use 347 as a phase voltage times my phase current or line current, sorry, same thing. 17.35 amp times root 3, that would come to 18061.35 VA. Same value. So we've got a second formula that works here. Go ahead and try that out. Okay, let's have a look at a delta circuit next. So in this delta circuit, 
um, we've got an impedance in each phase of 30 ohms and they're all at 20 degree lag so this is a balanced circuit our supply voltage is 240 volt so once again because the impedance is the same and the angle is the same in each phase we have a balanced circuit so I really have to figure out values for one phase and then multiply it by three let's go ahead and proceed with that so if I want to figure out the I of the phase I'm going to take my voltage of the phase and divide it by the impedance in each phase. In this case, we've got a 240 volt line voltage, and a delta line and phase voltages are the same value. Divide that by 30 ohms, it comes to about 8 amps. The apparent power in each phase is equal to the voltage of the phase times the I of the phase. So, 240 volt times 8 amp we've got 1920 VA let's just stop for a moment put that value on here so here's our S A B they're all going to be the same so that equals 1920 VA and we're at a 20 degree lag so in order to get my adjacent side here, or the power from A to B, I'd have to multiply 1920 by power factor, or the cosine of 20. It's the same thing. So true power of the phase is equal to my parent power of the phase times power factor, or cosine of our angle that we're at. So theta. So I'm going to take 1920 VA times it by cosine 20 degrees. And that's going to come to about 1804.2 watts. Eighteen hundred and four point two watts. The Q of the phase well, be the S of the phase times sine of the angle. Another method would also be that we could use Pythagorean theorem. If I have S and P, S of the phase squared minus P of the phase squared. Okay, so S, I'm going to use the sine theta method. So my S of the phase is 1920 VA. And I'm going to times that by sine of 20 degrees. That should come to about 656.7. So QAB goes right there. 656.7 VAR. Let's go ahead and label the other sides of the triangle. This one, this triangle in the middle represents phase S, B to C. Come on. This is the horizontal of it, is the power in B to C. And the vertical is the quadrant of power in B to C. Third triangle is their third phase, so that's S, C to A power C to A for the horizontal and the vertical is Q C to A. Because this is balanced circuit, the values are all going to be the same. So in other words, P A B is the same as P B C, which is the same as P C to A. Q A B is the same as QBC, which is the same as QCA. And we're all at the same angle. SAB is the same as SBC, which is the same as SC to A. All right, so if I want to figure out the total power, I just take the phase value, because they're all the same, and times it by 3. 
or add them up, whatever you prefer. Total true power in this circuit will be 54, 12.6 watts. And the Q total, well, that's going to be Q of the phase times 3 again, or figure them all out. If it was unbalanced, we would have to do that and add them up. 1,970.1 bar. And S total, well, if it was unbalanced, we'd have to use Pythag here. P total squared plus Q total squared. And that would come to 5,760. The other method that we could use is S total is equal to the S of the phase times 3. So we can do this because it's balanced. So parent power of the phase is 1920 times 3 of them. There's 3 phases. comes to 5760 VA. Let's try that new formula we just learned, the 3 phase power formula. S total is equal to V line times I line times root 3. It worked for delta. Let's see if it, or it worked for y. Let's see if it works for delta. So 240 volt times oh line current. Okay, let's figure out our line current. I line and the delta equals I phase times root three. So that's eight amps times root three comes out to about 13.856 amps. So, back to our formula, 240 times 13.856 amps times root 3 equals, oh, it's come to 5,760 VA. Look at that, same answer. So, that uh, three-phase power formula works for both. Let's, uh, let's have a look at why the power formula works for both. So for any balanced three-phase circuit, so that means same impedance and same power factor in each phase. We can take the S of the phase and multiply it by 3. It makes sense. There's three phases times it by 3. That's the total three-phase apparent power. So I could write this out in an expanded form. We know that S of the phase is equal to the voltage in the phase times the I of the phase and multiply it by 3. So, just to make sure we're aware, if I take root square root 3 and multiply it by square root 3, that equals 3. So I'm going to substitute square root through 3 times square root 3 when, whenever I see a 3. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. S total equals V phase times I phase times root 3 times root 3. Let's recall Y rules now. So in Y, V line equals V phase times root 3 and I line, well that's the same as I phase. So if I were to write the formula that we have here, over here, and I took V phase and times it by root 3, that comes to V line. So V line times I phase times root 3. Now the second rule for Y is that I line and I phase are the same value. So wherever I see I phase, I'm going to substitute in I line for Y. So we see that that's how our circuit is derived, or how our formula is derived when we're looking at it in a Y circuit. V line times I line times root 3. If I compare that to a delta circuit, we have V line, um, delta rules as V line is the same as V phase in this case, and I line for balanced circuit equals I phase times root 3. So if I were to write out the formula, 
S total equals V phase times I phase times root 3 times root 3. If I take I phase and I multiply it by root 3, I get I line. So S total equals V phase times I line times root 3. Well, the first rule of delta was that V line and V phase are the same thing. So wherever I see V phase, I can plop in V line. So S total is equal to V line times I line times root 3. Now this works for power as well, true power or quadrative power. I can use this formula. If you recall back, P total was equal to P of the phase times 3. Well, so I could use the same formula to, to determine this. Or we can say, we can also say P total would be equal to S total times the power factor. So S total is V line times I line times root 3 times power factor. All this calculation is is your S total as well when we're doing Q total for a balanced circuit. V line times I line times root 3 times sine theta. This is just S total. One other way we're going to use this formula is I'm going to use this formula to determine I line. And it doesn't matter which one I use. For Y or delta, it determines the line current. So if I want to rewrite this formula, S total equals V line times I line times root 3 to solve for I line, I could transpose it and go S total equals bracket V line times root 3. And I can determine the line current of my circuit. Why don't we go back to one of our previous examples here? Perhaps we'll go back to the Y circuit. 